No, it's your turn, Carola. A dear friend. She actually did a speech in Turin, WordCamp Turin, eight years ago, something like that. No, it's, no, it's not a speech. I was an attendee. Ah, you were an attendee, and yeah. the, the, the whole journey started there. It was yeah. like that, with interruption of COVID and stuff like that. But no, you are here. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm very, very proud and uh, nervous to be here. <laughs> Thank you. That's quite a journey. <laughs> so you talk about what you most like. Design. Design. Yeah. Okay. Then let's start with that. Applause beforehand and thank you, Dennis. Fun. Hi, good evening, and thank you all for being here. My name is Carola, and I come from uh, a beautiful place that is Lake Carda, Verona. To tell you a little bit about me in a simple way, as you may know, I'm a graphic designer. I love brush lettering and crochet. I'm a very creative person, and I also love stand up pedal. So this talk is for everyone who feels like a newbie and wants to know how to better design their site or for professional who wants to adopt a different approach to their methodology of work. So first of all, bad news, page builders, or as I like to call them, user-friendly builders are here to stay. You may know Elementor DV are the most common ones and even more creative agencies are using them to build a site. They also serve as a starting point for non-professionals who want to build their own site without any code or design knowledge. So we can say they help non-professionals create a site. They can assist professionals who want to give their client freedoms to build some parts. And yes, in case you haven't noticed, Gutenberg is a page builder too. <laughs> So at this point, some of you may ask, how can we apply design rules that were originally meant for print to something dynamic and scalable like a web page? So this is the problem we try to solve here today. Let's start with some facts. Studies show that people read only about 20% of the content on our websites, and it takes about 50 milliseconds to judge the page they're on. This means that even before reading a heading, graphic design and visual design affect the user on a subconscious level. So our goal is to make our website to be useful, but also visually appealing. Visual design matters. <laughs> I want you for a moment to step back and try to think of this single concept. We are always watching one portion of site at a time and that the limited portion of space is always a rectangle. Sometimes it's bigger and horizontally, sometimes it's smaller and vertical, but in the end, it's always like a window that we fill with our content, text, images, and so on. Uh, we, f we fill it like with a profundity and with like an infinite sheet that we scroll and scroll, but in the end, it's always a window. So keep this in mind and let's begin with our design. Firstly, a very important note, always start with your real content. Don't begin designing and fill the page with lorem ipsum text and placeholder images, because design should be like a dress that make our information looks good. As we mentioned earlier, our users don't read, but they scan the page searching for what they need. Another tip is always to start from a draft in a simple design software. It makes it easier to change color and move elements even before jumping into the builder. This helps us define style and not be overwhelmed and waste too much time with the infinite customization option that a builder can offer. We can now begin with our first rule, there is consistency. Start from your brand guideline and create a style tile. In case you don't have a brand guideline, it's a simple document that contains all your brand assets and information, like logo, logo variations, color palette, and so on. And we have to create a web version of it called a style tile, or for the more expert, a new eye kit. It really helps create this even before opening the builder, because we need to clarify what style we want to implement first. So what's inside a style tile? All the version of your logo that you're planning to use in the site, such as an horizontal version, the main logo for the header, a different one if you plan to use in the footer or a small icon for the favicon. 
color palettes, all typography for headings and paragraphs, image icons and so on, and all the, the other elements like buttons, dividers. These are all the fundamental elements of our style. And to borrow a concept from a very famous book that I recommend reading, these are the atoms of our design. So here we have an example of a really simple style tile. Yes, it can be as simple as this one. So we can see that we have logo, logo variations, color palettes, headings, and in this case, icons and illustration styles and buttons. Remember also that not all the assets in a brand guideline are always suitable for a style tile. One example is a color palette. So always try and uh, ensure your contrast is okay for accessibility and readability with a tool like this one. Our second rule is emphasis. We need now to group our components into more structure, uh, um, into more complex structure, there are elements. When we group this element, we need to use emphasis rules. This rule answers the question, what I wanted to be seen first. So here I create a simple scheme that shows that everything needs to stay in an order of hierarchy. So you always have to decide what's the most important thing. This concept of elements also help us design and think of the page as an organism that can be deconstructed and rearranged, making it adaptable to different devices and reusable for different content. So here we have some example of elements where we can see there is always a focal point is the image or the eating. At the end comes the, the button or the small text. So I will be more interested in reading it if the image are telling me that this is the thing that I'm searching for. We can have tunes of example of um, elements also in the WordPress repository that show always the same concept of hierarchy and uh, emphasis. Let's now organize our content on a bigger level with the third rules of balance and repetitions. Remember our rectangles? We need to think of our website in terms of areas. In each area, I need to establish not only hierarchy, but also organize content with balance and repetition and create patterns. Balance is about visually divide our page in a half and calibrate the visual weight of every element. Before we ask what I wanted to be seen first, now I have to ask me what is the same importance? When something looks the same and it's repeated, it obviously has the same importance, but I can differentiate using icons, such as in a list of services or posts. These areas are what Gutenberg calls patterns. They can have different terminology in different builder, but in the end, the important things is they can be saved and reused for different content and in different pages of the site. So here we have example of patterns. And we can have tools of example of a pattern also in the WordPress Teams repository or in every builder page looking for templates. And in the end, if I can really have a, find a purple for pre-made layouts, is to give us ideas and inspiration of all the possibilities we have to show and represent our information better. Last rule, we finally have to create our web page with the rules of movement and white space. Once we have all our parts or patterns, we can start unify them into a web page and then into the entire site structure. At this point, our mission is to create movement, stuck in patterns to create and give our content a story. As you may know, people usually scan our page in a half pattern or in a Z pattern. So I need my areas changed to indicate that I'm covering different topics. But also remember that if everything is important, nothing is important. So create some space to focus attention on specific elements. Remember that also everything that creates movements thanks to the column in a desktop view has to be stuck in a one monolithic block of the smaller screen. I think mobile design maybe needs a separate talk of five hours, but to summarize, we can say that we need to hide or erase everything that's unnecessary for the mobile version. 
So here we have an example of a structure of a website with a repeated pattern. Another thing that can have that we can notice here is that we have to think three-dimensionally in terms of layers. For example, using different backgrounds will attract attention. So to summarize what we have seen, be consistent and create a style tile. Give emphasis at the single elements with hierarchy. Balance and repeat with patterns and create movement and white space in a web page. And always rem remember to always organize information visually for scanning. In the end, if I can really give you a final note, I think it really doesn't matter the technology we use. We need to think of design as a system that can help our user with the same importance of content, code, or accessibility. All the are, these areas need to work together to make our message arrive at the maximum number of people. Here I, I give you some books that really helps if you want to know more about web design. And uh, I'll leave you my, my slide. Thank you. Very good. Well designed. <laughs> Thank you. I Thank you. For you. Bye. And uh, yeah, very instructional for, for, <laughs> for me. <laughs>